Honourable Member for Calgary Foothills. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I see some interesting movements here in the House and uh, the, the top government officials have chosen their seats for 2019, looks like. So, <laughs> congratulations. I can't wait to see you and uh, I will be, I'll be speaking from that side soon. So. And uh, they already got the message, uh, Mr. Uh, Chair, that uh, Albertans have noted that this government is not listening to common sense solutions offered by the official opposition. So uh, they, they already, you know, um, they are already rehearsing their uh, future roles in opposition. Uh, good to see that. But Mr. Chair, some of my colleagues talked about uh, um, the resource, you know, where we can find it and the abundance of it. I also talked about the resource we, we own here in Alberta, how fortunate we were to have that uh, resource. Unlike Saudi and Venezuela for conventional oil, you have to actually explore to find it. In Alberta, we don't have to do that. We already know where it exists. It's about how can we extract that resource, both economically and environmentally, in a responsible way. That's all we are talking about. We already know where it is. And now this government wants to strand that resource. And this Bill 25 is about capping that uh, development and capping that production. Um, even if they cap it at 100 megaton for the time being, till, till uh, the Premier, Deputy Premier, House Leader moves this side and till we move that side, if, assuming that they, they cap it at 100 megaton, still those uh, operating plants in the oil sands, they need heat energy. They need heat for all the process, for all the op operating process in that uh, hydrocarbon operations up north, uh, Mr. Chair. And one way to, to reduce those emissions is to use biomass. And it's interesting, uh, my, uh, the, my colleague and the previous speaker quoted a document Biomass Innovation by Alberta Innovates Biosolutions, and it's also prepared by, together with Alberta Innovates Biosolutions, together with them, Climate Change and Emissions Management Corporation. They, they co-authored this document, and my colleague from, um, yeah, Battle River Wainwright, quoted this document extensively and uh, I got curious so now I'm just looking at that and it's there are portions I am reading out of that and it it is uh, it, it is defining what is actually biomass Mr. Chair biomass is the only renewable source of carbon it can be converted into transportation fuels heat electricity, chemicals, and materials. The most abundant forms of biomass are wood, agricultural residues, examples straw and manure, and organic municipal waste. Canada has more biomass per capita than any other country on earth. So Mr. Mr. Chair, it's all about harvesting the resource we have in front of us. We are blessed to have. No other country has, which is the envy of many nations in the world. I talked to you about the energy poverty and energy hungry. I personally experienced when I lived and worked overseas. And in this country, we have all sorts of resources. Like uh, my colleague from Sylvan Lake said, we are rich with this renewable and non-renewable resources. So when I talk about the non-renewable oil, oil sands, which is the major uh, resource we own, and uh, 
when we talk about uh, renewables, we're talking about intermittent uh, sources like wind and uh, solar, which are, which are renewables, but they need backup. So to substitute uh, alternate energy efficient resources in uh, oil sands operations, so biomass could be a good alternate. And, and the member from Calgary East said, oh, we like bio, I mean, biomass. We, we, we like to develop that, but we want to cap it. So look at the inconsistencies there again and again and again. We like this, but we want to cap it. We want to create jobs. We want, we'll yeah, we'll stifle. We want pipelines but we want to cap production, so we don't need to move the product to the pipeline. It's totally inconsistent, Mrs. Mr. Chair. Um, and, and like I said, you know, we, this government doesn't want to harvest oil sands resource we own to the full potential and to the full benefit of Albertans, not only this generation, for future generations, just because of the ideological reasons. Um, and again, we, have, we, we are blessed with these forest products. And uh, I, when I was young, Mr. Chair, I saw people um, using wood waste products to, to cook food and to um, to heat up uh, their homes. I saw that during winter, they, they didn't have electricity and they can't afford uh, diesel um, generators to, to, to heat uh, their homes or to power their homes. They were using forest waste products or municipal waste products. So this, it's, it's a, it's a it's a good opportunity here to allow oil sands to use biomass for their heating requirements. They need, they need the heat for all the chemical operation processes uh, to crack. Uh, first of all, in the uh, SAGD process, they need heat to heat the reservoir uh, so they can pump out the bitumen. Um, so I don't know why we want to not exempt biomass from this cap of 100 megaton. It's again a reasonable amendment. You want to harvest the natural resources you have, which are renewable. Okay, so other alternatives in these operations, they use natural gas. They burn it to make steam. But when I traveled uh, northern Alberta, um, I saw places like uh, Alpac and all who said they have this uh, capacity to produce 100 megaton um, el electricity with a feedstock of uh, biomass, which we have in Alberta. Others don't have the same kind of forest products we have. And we want to use that effectively, um, but I don't see why these government members are selectively saying they like renewables, but they don't want oil sands operations to deploy those renewables and help reduce their emissions. I don't get that. Uh, we should be actually encouraging oil sands operations to integrate biomass to their heat and electricity generations because um, if we keep using natural gas in the oil sands, whether to recover vitamin or in the process of upgrading uh, vitamin to synthetic crude oil, um, we'll be producing more greenhouse gas emissions. We should rather exempt biomass 
from the emissions cap so we can incent the usage of greener resource by the oil sands uh, operators. Um, and yeah, 100 percent renewable. It's slam dunk. It's a low-hanging fruit. What's missing here is common sense. Why do you reject that? <laughs> I don't get it. Um, yeah, it seems common sense is shortage here. It's scarce resource. Right. So, um, Mr. Chair, biomass also provides a base load deployable power. The fact that uh, wind and solar, they are just intermittent renewables, we have an opportunity here to provide constant invariable electricity, uh, which can be used for resource extraction or processing operations. It could be used for both uh, purposes. Because in, if, uh, if you see any of these uh, operating plants up north, uh, Mr. Chair, you see there are a lot of equipment, whether it is heat exchangers, columns, reactors, pressure vessels. They all need heat. And here is an opportunity to use biomass, which is 100 percent renewable, to help reduce their cost and also to, to have a baseload, renewable baseload power and, uh, and to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. And it's not Wild Rose who is saying that. This is Alberta Innovates Biosolutions, overseen by the Minister of Economic Development, they are telling, at least you should listen to them. And uh, my colleague, uh, the previous speaker, he talked about some of the other features of this biomass. He talked about how biomass can reduce greenhouse gas emissions from Canada's largest and fastest growing sources. He talked about how biomass can be economically utilized in Canada's existing carbon-based infrastructure. He talked about biomass, uh, how it can create far more jobs than other renewables and builds upon human resource trends. Now, speaking about creating jobs, Mr. Chair, um, you and I represent ridings in Calgary, and uh, our city has lost so many jobs. So creating jobs should be the top priority of this government. And Alberta Innovates is suggesting by utilizing biomass as a resource here that can create far more jobs. And this creates jobs and it provides significant economic development opportunities for indigenous people. Mr. Speaker, this is interesting. Now the indigenous ministry is not here. But this government, which is supposed to be the champion of indigenous people, Alberta Innovates is telling us that this biomass can provide significant economic opportunities for indigenous people. If you care about indigenous people, then exempt biomass from oil sands emissions cap of 100 megaton. And biomass also provides immense clean tech innovation and technology development operations. We heard so many times in this house, uh, Mr. Chair, about uh, clean tech, about the innovation and all that. But here is an easy solution. All we have to do is act on that. And this government seems to be not willing to act on that. And this document also went on to say that Canada has more biomass per capita than any other country on the earth. Why can't we use it? No other country has 
as much biomass as Canada and Alberta has, but we refuse to harvest that. Why? Why? Very good question. Our, our children are going to ask us those questions. Mr. Chair, your children, my children, my grandchildren, they're going to ask us. You had an opportunity to deploy more biomass in oil sands operations to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Why did you not act? When they ask, what's, what's going to be the answer? Can member from Calgary East speak about that? Or can the member from Edmonton Mecklen get up and talk about this and explain to us? And this document also quotes, uh, Mr. Chair, biomass that is degraded in the absence of uh, oxygen, such as decomposition in landfill, releases methane, a greenhouse gas, 25 times more impactful than more impactful than carbon dioxide, Mr. Chair. So by using biomass as a fuel, these methane emissions can be avoided and fo fossil fuel consumption reduced. This is one way that bioenergy and biofuel use can reduce greenhouse gas emissions by greater than 100% from a fossil fuel baseline. The other is combining bioenergy with carbon capture and storage or utilization. Probably, uh, Mr. Chair, that's what uh, member from Innisfail was talking about, how we can handle methane by using biomass. So like I said before, Mr. Chair, intermittent renewables such as wind and solar, they cannot address base load electricity, GHG intensity challenges as per this document. And uh, Mr. Chair, we talked about uh, cogen operations in, uh, in uh, SAGD facilities. I keep uh, pivoting that back every time because I feel very strongly about that. I was really disappointed this government has, has rejected that amendment to, to exempt cogen operations in oil sands from the cap of 100 megaton. It's, it's, it's very disappointing. So now we are saying, okay, you might have rejected that because it's a non-renewable source. Here we have a renewable source, which is biomass. We don't understand why you don't exempt that. I think the member from Calgary Northwest should be the next speaker to explain us why. It seems there is some reason. I want to understand. And uh, Mr. Chair, this document also highlights how biomass can, can be a great job creator. Biomass creates by far the most long-term operating jobs of any renewable energy, up to 5.5 per megawatt versus 0.2 to 0.7 per megawatt for uh, PV solar and onshore wind. So um, I, I'll table this document tomorrow, Mr. Chair. It, there, there is lots of good information. This is not a wild rose document. This is not from my shadow budget or anything. This is the document prepared by Alberta Innovate Biosolutions, co-authored by Climate Change and Emissions Management Corporation. With all the good things and good intentions uh, this government seems to have, in theory, but in practice, they're very inconsistent and they, they, um, they don't adopt any of those um, innovations or any of those technologies they talk about. It's only for talk, not for adopting. They don't want to act on that. Um, it doesn't make sense.